Hello, welcome to Synoptic Designs. I'm Dave Marr. This video is the first in a plan series on the topic of do-it-yourself music studio furniture construction. Other videos on YouTube about the same general topic appear to fall into two categories. The first type relate to the assembly of prefabricated furniture, either generic such as IKEA or commercially available furniture specifically designed and constructed to accommodate music studio equipment. The second type on the subject are videos by craftspeople with advanced woodworking skills and access to a cabinet maker's workshop and equipment who are fabricating fine furniture. Prefab furniture may have an advantage in that it is general purpose. It can accommodate many different types of equipment. However, none of the prefab furniture I am aware of makes any provision for cable and wiring management that's both convenient and aesthetically pleasing. Typically, cables and wiring just hang over the rear of the furniture work surfaces and are fully visible as a jumbled mess at the rear. In addition, prefab furniture doesn't provide any method of acoustical isolation of studio doll PCs. Custom-built fine furniture for a studio may be aspirational, but most musicians aren't master cabinet makers with access to fully equipped woodworking shop and equipment. Another aspect of the custom-built studio furniture I have seen demonstrated on YouTube is that it's usually specific to fit a certain specific complement of studio equipment. Constructing studio furniture that way makes the assumption, it would appear to me, that the same equipment will always be in use. In my experience, a musician's studio is a constantly evolving arrangement of equipment. As old equipment becomes obsolete or unusable, a new equipment is obtained. It would be awkward, to say the least, to have to replace purpose-built fine furniture because new or different equipment wouldn't fit. Similar to the cable management and PC acoustic isolation issues that prefab furniture has, the full custom furniture I've seen also lacks solutions to those issues. In this series, I'll introduce concepts for studio furniture design that provide for flexibility and accommodating a wide range of studio equipment that incorporate integral cable management into the design and provide for acoustic isolation of the studio PC. The design concepts I'll present are applicable to a wide range of studio sizes, from ultra-compact designs to larger fully equipped studios. In follow-on videos, I'll discuss how to design your own studio furniture and how to construct furniture that can flexibly accommodate many types of studio equipment. You'll not need to be a skilled cabinet maker or have access to, to sophisticated woodworking tools. Realistically though, some woodworking experience will be required as well access to some basic power tools. I'll discuss both possible materials which may economically be used for constructing studio furniture as well as the types of tools that may be used. I'll also demonstrate some fabrication techniques specific to the suggested materials. In the last video of the series, I'll give a virtual tour of the Synoptic Design Studio in detail with a discussion of my equipment, what it is, how it's interconnected, and the types of activities I use the studio for. Let's start with a look at the current Synoptic Design Studio with a focus on the furniture and how the concept of cable management and PC acoustic isolation are realized. As I mentioned before, the same basic concepts can be used for much smaller studio arrangements, which I'll discuss in the second video in this series with design examples. This first picture is a wide-angle shot of the entire Synoptic Design Studio. Note in particular that the furniture is placed on a raised platform. This platform is an important element of the overall concept of both cable management and the acoustical isolation of the studio doll PC, as I'll subsequently explain and demonstrate. In addition to the platform, there are five main pieces of furniture. From left to right, clockwise, there's the keyboard bench, there's the left main unit, the right main unit, and two identical rack cases. With the equipment removed, each of those individual units can be moved separately. In addition, the platform can also be disassembled and moved in pieces. Please note also that this entire furniture assembly is butted up against the wall at the rear, which has some implications I'll explain later. 
Now let's take a quick look at the back of the keyboard bench. What's significant is what you don't see. No spaghetti of cables hanging out of the rear of the equipment. Also in this view, at the left, is a lateral file where I keep all the equipment manuals and other studio documentation. I fabricated a case to place the file cabinet into primarily because I wanted to avoid creating permanent divots in the carpet and padding that the weight of the four small feet of the file would have created. Now let's look at the rear of the keyboard bench with the cover removed. You can now see that there's a cable chase built into the rear of the keyboard bench. This hidden chase communicates horizontally with the left main unit and also with the space between the top and bottom layers of the raised platform below. The keyboard bench and both the left and right main units have similar integral cable chases. In addition to acting as cable chases, these spaces at the rear of the units perform as air circulation plenums. This is particularly important where it relates to the acoustical isolation of the Studio DAW PC, as I'll discuss in detail when I get to that item. On the opposite side of the studio, the rack cases also have a rear cover. This picture shows the inside of that cover when it's removed to reveal the cases with the rear cover removed. Note how the various cables can pass laterally with both the adjacent rack case and also to the right into the cable chase of the right main unit at the rear of the studio. Note in particular how cables can be routed down into the platform chase where they cross under the platform to connect with equipment on the far side of the studio or the left and right main units at the rear of the studio space. Here are some views of the front of the individual pieces of furniture. This is the keyboard bench. The main bench can accommodate a large 88-key keyboard. There is a riser at the rear with an adjustable shelf for additional equipment, and the top of the riser provides a space to locate the keyboard monitor speakers at the correct height and a removable music holder. Below, the various pedal units have cables which pass into the rear cable chase through holes with desk cable grommets installed to provide a finished look. In the last video of this series, I'm going to provide a detailed description of the equipment, what it is, how it has evolved over the years, how the equipment's interconnected, and what activities I use the equipment for. This is the left main unit. The main units have a raised L-shaped shelf above the main work surface. The Studio Doll PC and its acoustical enclosure is located under the right side of this unit. This is the right main unit. The video monitor and main monitor speakers are on the raised shelf. On the main surface is a MIDI controller keyboard. This controller can be moved back under the raised shelf to provide bench space for other activities. There's a pull-out keyboard mouse platform. The studio subwoofer is located under the right-hand side of this unit. Finally, here's a front view of the two equipment rack units. There are two turntables located on top of the rack units. As I mentioned previously, I will discuss all the equipment in detail in a video studio tour at the end of this series. Up to this point, we've been viewing photos of the actual studio. It's not possible to disassemble the existing physical installation to observe construction details. Fortunately, I've created a virtual model of all the furniture and equipment with a 3D modeling application. Using the model, it is possible to see details that are hidden in the real world. This is a view of that model, absent the floor and walls of the actual studio. Let's start by first removing the furniture. Next, let's lose the equipment on the keyboard unit, followed by removing the equipment on the left main unit, followed by removing the equipment on the right main unit, and then the left rack case equipment. And finally, we'll remove all the equipment from the right rack case unit. Up until a few years ago, there was a third rack case. With that case removed, another cover was fabricated to cover the large side cable pass-through holes in the remaining case. A single hole at the bottom of the cover with a desk cable grommet allows microphone cables to be passed from a preamp in the right rack case out into the room for live recording. As I mentioned previously, the rear of the studio is against the wall of the room it's located in. The virtual model was created as if it were freestanding, and covers were created to cover the rear of the main units. In the real world, there is a foam gasket around the edges to seal the rear chases against the wall. This is a view of the rear of the unit with all the covers in place. With all covers removed, the existence of the integral cable chases becomes readily apparent. Notice the two cutouts in the center of the main units. The one on the right is where the computer enclosure backs up to the cable chase, which is now acting as an air plenum. 
exhaust air can flow freely into the space and down into the platform space before exiting in at either side of the platform through vents at the bottom of the covers. The left cutout is an access port with a removable cover to allow reaching into the rear space to route cabling since there's no direct rear access. This is an elevation view of the rear of the studio with covers removed. Notice the generous complement of openings with desk grommets that allow the equipment cables to route into the cable chase. You can also see at either side how the main units have lateral openings that connect with the rack cases on the left and with the keyboard unit on the right. Flipping back around to the front, you can see the opening at the rear where the computer case backs up to the enclosed cable chase slash air plenum. Without an end cover, the openings in the side of the rack case to the right that originally connected with the third rack case are visible. The keyboard and mouse platform under the right main unit work surface is in the closed position in this image. In this view, the computer enclosure is in position with the rear of the case butted against the rear panel of the left main unit. The cover of the access port and the rear panel of the right main unit has been removed. The rack case end cover at the right is in position. There is an access opening in the lower right of the cover that allows mic cables to connect with the preamp in the case. I keep the cables coiled up inside the case with just the connectors and a few inches of cable hanging out of the opening. I can then just pull the length of cable out required to connect to a mic setup in the room. This is a plan view, a straight overhead shot of the studio with the equipment installed. The platform is 9 feet wide, side to side, and 7 feet 7 inches deep, front to rear. I had that width available while allowing for a necessary 30 inch wide passageway on both sides. A similar setup could probably be accommodated in an 8 foot width. When originally constructed, access to the platform was via the open side of the U-shape. When I completed the home theater that shares the room with the studio, the theater seating blocked access from the front. I then had to pare down some equipment and eliminate the end rack case so I could use that space to enter the studio area on the platform from the side. The plywood top surface of the platform is covered using carpet tiles. When I removed the rack case, I didn't have any spare carpet, so I covered the entry with rubber matting sold as carpet runner at home improvement stores. I also had to cover the tops of the rack cases for other reasons, so I just used the same material for that purpose. I'm now going to discuss how noise created by the Studio DAW PC is almost entirely suppressed from entering the room. This is a front view of the acoustical enclosure with the door closed. The air intake is at the bottom of the door. I selected a door handle that would reduce the possibility of snagging on clothing. Previously, I described how the DAW computer case is butted up against an opening in the rear panel of the left main unit so that exhaust air and fan noise are directed down into the platform plenum space and then exit at some distance before entering the room. Every doubling of distance in free air results in sound levels being reduced by half or minus six decibels. When sound travels in a convoluted path, there's an opportunity for absorption of the sound waves by the surfaces it impinges on. There is a foam seal around the rear opening to ensure that air and noise cannot escape at that location. However, the exhaust is not the only source of noise. A significant amount of noise is radiated out the front of the PC through the ventilation openings. To deal with this source of noise is a little more complicated. The basic concept of my design is to employ an air intake plenum in the case that follows a folded path with acoustical baffles in that plenum. Shortly, we'll look at a cutaway view of the 3D model of this case to illustrate the folded intake plenum. Before looking at that detail, there's some aspects of the PC itself that help to reduce radiated noise. On the interior of the aluminum case, sheets of sound damping material have been applied wherever possible. The power supply has a 120 millimeter fan, which turns more slowly and thus generates less noise. The graphics card employs finned heat pipes and has no fan at all. At an earlier iteration of the internal components, the CPU was cooled by a Zalman heat pipe cooler. That cooler used a relatively quiet slow speed fan. At the last component upgrade, that Zalman cooler would no longer fit the new motherboard mounting holes, so had to revert to the stock Intel CPU cooler fan. Now let's take that look at a cutaway of the acoustical enclosure model. The front is at the left and the rear is at the right. Intake air enters the door opening at lower left and travels to the rear of the enclosure and then the plenum bends 180 degrees and the air travels back to the front of the case, 
where it can enter the PC air intakes at the bottom of the case front panel. Sound being radiated from the PC is traveling in the opposite direction. The gray rectangles located in the upper passage of the plenum represent the acoustic foam blocks that form baffles. Notice that the baffles are slightly thicker than half the height of the plenum, so that there's no straight path for noise to travel in. Also notice that at the rear of the PC case, there is a vertical black band representing a foam seal on all four sides of the case to prevent exhaust air from recirculating back to the intake. Returning to the actual enclosure image, note that there's a foam door gasket around the perimeter of the case. There's also a foam gasket horizontally, separating the upper and lower plenum passages at the front to prevent short-circuiting of either air or noise. If you've watched this video to this juncture, I assume you do have an interest in the possibility of designing and constructing your own music studio furniture. But perhaps you're saying, Dave, I don't have the space or equipment that you had for the Synoptic Design Studio. I only need a compact furniture unit. As I mentioned previously, the general concepts of cable management and acoustic isolation of my DAW PC are applicable to the full range of studio furniture sizes. I'll discuss designing your own furniture with these features in the next video of this series. For now, here are images of virtual models of some possible furniture arrangements. Even though none of these units are constructed in a fixed platform, as the Synoptic Design Studio is, they all incorporate features that provide cable management, and all but the unit that accommodates the laptop PC also include the features for the acoustical isolation of the Studio DAW PC. If you're seeing this video prior to the release of others in the series, you may want to subscribe so that you'll be informed of those eventualities. If you should have an interest in following Synoptic Designs on Facebook, a link is provided below to the Synoptic Designs page, which generally relates to art, craft, and invention activities. Go to the Photos collection to quickly review any areas that may be of interest. I hope you found this presentation informative. Thanks for watching and please leave any comments or suggestions below.